To all my moms moving on, I have something amazing for you. If you're ready to move on from your engagement ring, the experts at Worthy can help you turn it into cash fast and risk-free. Worthy does all the work and their competitive auctions get you the best deal possible. Over 45,000 people have already moved on with Worthy. Are you ready to move on too? Visit worthy.com slash moms to get an extra $100 when your jewelry sells for over $1,500. That's worthy.com slash moms for a special bonus offer just for the Moms Moving On community. First and foremost, I'm a dad and I love doing dad stuff. I think it's helpful for people to hear the male perspective because I too separated when my daughter was two years old Mm -hmm. and moms, moms of kids that age who separate their biggest fear is time sharing because they've done everything for the kids at that point. And Mm -hmm. you know, the, they, the attachment is still forming and they're, they're just so scared. And my message is always, well, can't be a dad if you don't let him be a dad so we got to give him that space so I want to know what that was like for you yeah there's definitely competing priorities as far as you know when you say that what comes to mind is like well don't you want your daughter all the time like sure deep down I would love to have her all the time Welcome back to another Moms Moving On. And you know, we talk to a lot of moms on here, but every once in a while, I like to get the dad perspective to keep things fair and balanced. And also because I just think it's helpful for our listeners to know what's really going on for a dad when he is also doing his best to co-parent and want to do it well. So we have none other than Mike Draper on with us today. You probably know him on TikTok and Instagram. He is the king of all things funny. But there's a lot more than meets the eye. He's a former SWAT police officer and Air Force vet turned viral content creator and is quickly gaining the world's attention and taking the online business world by storm. From corporations and C-suite to entrepreneurs and independents, Mike's brilliant MBA mind is taking true social strategy to the masses and helping everyone go viral. I love that. You're you're like well-rounded and a single dad. Check, please. (laughs) Mike, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Thanks for the intro, building me up. I got to live up to it, right? So got to gas your head up here. That's what we do. (laughs) Yeah. So give us like the, the Mike elevator pitch. Mike elevator pitch. Who am I? Well, you kind of just said right there. That's like what I do and what I've done. Um, really who I am to a core is I am a dad first and foremost. I just dropped off Ellie just 20 minutes ago at school. You know, we do our gratitude in the car when we drive there, we talk about our goal. Like she has one goal, right? Her her one goal right now is a pull up by my birthday in summer. And then she can get some new, get some new leotards for gymnastics, but like just goal setting gratitude. So for, for me, it's just first and foremost, I'm a dad and I love doing dad stuff. Um, I'm in my garage right now. And if you can see the floors, it's all multicolored padded gymnastics flooring. There's a little, what is it? A bar for her to do her yeah. pullovers and whatever the trampoline like right there. <laughs> so um, that's who I am decor. That's a long elevator pitch. Hold on one second. Uh-oh. I have, that's actually so fitting. It's my ex-husband and I have him on emergency breakthrough. But anyway, um, oh, yep. Kevin, you could just edit all that right out. But okay, so you are dad goals because you have obviously embraced your daughter's likes and like went for the gold there with with making it her whole life I love that how old is she she is eight years old okay so is mine and um I know I know that that can be an all-consuming thing with little girls when they get their minds into something yeah she's I've been very lucky in that she has been a very easy child quote unquote right so even as like a as an infant she would never get like sick or you know she only threw up a couple times nothing crazy no tantrums not you know and then even as a eight-year-old now she's very calm mellow and like controls her emotions very well for an eight-year-old so it's uh, she has moments of breakthrough where it's like yep she's eight but then there's like 90 percent of the time it's like she's nearly an, an adult it feels like so i'm blessed in that way that's awesome so how long have you guys been co-parenting her what's your what's your history there yeah so um ellie was born in 2014 in november and then we got divorced her mom and i in in june of 17 is when we separated so 
She was two and a half uh, and have been co-parenting ever since. So the past five and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm coming up on six and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you feel like I do where it's like, now you can breathe. Things feel normal. You have a flow and a routine every once in a while shit hits the fan, but for the most part, it's okay. Yeah, pretty much. There's when we, when school started, that was like a, a fan moment of shit hitting. <laughs> and then there was, uh, and then only like recently, like recently of, of travel stuff, um, for my work, you know, I, I, I go, I go speak on stages and, and at corporations and companies, whatever. And I get to bring Elyon trips, um, when it's feasible. And so there was a big trip coming up and that's a topic of conversation with her, her mom. So, yeah. Hope that works out for you. I hope it works out best for Ellie. I should say. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great though. Um, are you so you have always done the social media thing? But when did you start putting yourself out there, like in the single dad context? Because I've noticed in the last few years, like more and more people are coming out of their like divorce single parenting closet, so to speak. Right. Yeah. So great question. So I started doing social media. Uh, just over two years ago. So not that long ago. And it was because before that I was police and military. And so I would just have personal family, couple photos, you know, a year on there. Um, and so I started doing it for mortgages. So I, le I left poli the police world and became a uh, licensed loan officer. So for mortgages for, for real estate. And I had to figure out a way to let more people know what I do. And so I figured, you know, talk to my whole sphere. So I went through my whole entire phone contact list and contacted every single person and then social media. And so my name was mortgage Mike on my handles. I started making real estate finance mortgage content. And, and then I started, I slowly started branching outside of mortgage just to, you know, some kind of trend came up and I, I, I thought of a joke for it. Uh, so I did the joke at whether it's corporate humor or millennial or a dating or divorce, just whatever the topic was. And I finally, I got some like success you know, as far as view count goes on one of those videos that were not mortgages. Um, my actual, my first video that went over a hundred thousand uh, views was actually on real estate. It was like comparing the eighties to like today and eighties content always wins. Yeah. So it's, it's, but like, that's what kind of started it. So I got a taste of like some virality and so it's like, Oh, it's interesting. Why does that video do so good, but not that one. And then it became a game of figuring out how videos and why videos get so many views or don't. And then I, th so then I started going down the rabbit hole of just figuring out the algorithm as best I could and learning and talking to people. And then as I was doing that, I started making content outside of mortgage more and more frequently. And then shortly after, so I started in January, January 28th of 2021. And then it was in April. So like two and a half. Wait, I love later, that. You know, the date, like you have a, I, I scroll anniversary. <laughs> I, I know I scrolled back. I had to like, I wanted to know. <laughs> I forgot. Um, it's part of my, like my, my speaking stuff. I don't, you know, just to give data on like timelines and all the things. But uh, so like in April is when a, a few reality shows reached out uh, big brother bachelorette and a couple others. And I went pretty deep into the interview process for both of them uh, at the same time. And so in April, I was like, okay, I didn't get on the shows. And then my mind was like, my mind was thinking, well, what else can this app do if I can get more views? So then my focus became views versus mortgage. Right. <laughs> so, cause I'm like, well, what other doors I don't even know exist are there. Right. And so I started going down that path uh, and that was April. And it was not until like October of 2021, where I like committed my account to like the single dating millennial dad, more so single dating dad. And the millennial came in later, um, as like my niche. And I just, I like, I sat there, honestly, it had like some choices. You can make videos on whatever you want or don't, but like, I kind of had some core pillars of stuff I was doing that was working. I had like corporate humor, millennial dating dad. And then, um, like real estate was still in there. And I like looked at them and thought about, okay, longevity, what do I enjoy making? What is core true to my heart? And like all these things. And I landed on the dating niche and just hammered it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, listen, there are certain things that are like evergreen wins all the time. And 
I mean, I don't, between Jess and I, we, we send your posts back and forth all the time, like the millennial content, the music, cause it's like, we're just so stuck in that place. It felt so good then. And right. of course the, the single world and the dating world and single parenting, like it's so much bigger. I, I bet you didn't know, like, I didn't know it was so much bigger than I recognized it to be. And, and like you, like my entire career or in this space was built on social media, you know, like, right. I, they, they, I like put it out there and they came and I was like, oh, okay, this is a thing. So I love that you're doing it because we don't have enough male voices in the space. And I want to know from your perspective, like you've been a single dad now for almost six years. What right. is that? What has that experience been like from you? Like, how was it when you started? Was it really hard to adjust? Like, I think it's helpful for people to hear the male perspective because I too separated when my daughter was two years old mm -hmm. and moms, moms of kids that age who separate their biggest fear is time sharing because they've done everything for the kids at that point. And mm -hmm. you know, the, they, the attachment is still forming and they're, they're just so scared. And my message is always, well, can't be a dad if you don't let him be a dad. So we got to give him that space. So I want to know what that was like for you. Yeah. There's definitely competing priorities as far as, you know, when you say that, what comes to mind is like, well, don't you want your daughter all the time? Like, sure. Deep down, I would love to have her all the time. But like, is that what is best for her and her development? And no, right? Like, so like, there's gotta be time on both sides. Uh, and as a two and a half year old, I guess when I first got separated, so my mind, so talking about parents, so let's talk about parenting. Okay. So um, as a dad, uh, for me, it was time with her. So I was a police officer when, when I got divorced. I was working, I believe, swing shift at the time. So it was like 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. until 1 a.m. And so I had her on my days off only, uh, just the way it, it worked out. And so all of my free time was with her, which I loved, right? And so I was full-time dad on my days off, right? Just mm -hmm. everything, anything, because she's only two and a half, three years old. And so um, she's in gymnastics then. She started soccer then, <laughs> like around then. Uh and so for me, it was the, it's the time away right away. So like it, one day you're with them all like what, at one point in your life, you're with them 24 hours a day or, you know, all every day of the week. And then all of a sudden not like half or like yeah. less than half for yeah. a lot of the guys crazy. Um, in, in my case as well. So it's like, uh, and you don't have control as far as like, I want to go see them. And it's like, nope, you don't get to. <laughs> That's rough, right? That's like a bucket of cold water to the face every yeah, day. Yeah, very accurate, right? So that sucks. And then like, if you love being a parent, that's hard on both ends, right? And so typically early on, the kiddos are attached to mom um, much more strongly, if that's the right word, but because of whether it's breastfeeding, more time, you know, the physical, emotional connection because they just gave birth not that long ago, right? Like there's all the things Um typically their stronger connection with the mom early on. Uh, and, and so if, if a dad, for, so the dad's perspective, I, I got attached the moment I met her. And I remember someone saying that to me, Oh, like her mom was pregnant and with her, with Ellie, this is obviously. And uh, someone's like, Oh, it all changes when you meet your daughter. And I never understood that. Like when, when I meet my daughter, she's right there in her stomach. I don't understand. Right. Uh, and then she comes out and I'm like, Oh, I fucking get it. <laughs> like <laughs> you're yeah. everything. Come here, baby. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so it's really that moment where it's like, oh my God, this baby needs me and I need this baby. Right. And so uh so it was hard the separation part from the from the dad, the looking through the lens of being a dad. Uh, because I, I love being a dad. Um I love just helping, nurturing like the space she's around the environment for her to grow, learn and be the best that she can be. Uh, whether that's pushing her in certain directions, um, exposing her to certain experiences or, or whatever it is. I love being there for her and seeing those like light bulbs come on for her. So, and that's, and that's the gift of shared parenting. And I, and I love that you put it that way. I love that you acknowledged the attachment in the early years for moms, because that is true. But I do believe two things can be true mom and child can still be forming that attachment and dad still needs to play a really pivotal role during that time as well. Mm -hmm. 
That's I yeah, love that you share that. Yeah, there's uh, my head right here, but there's just tons of data on either direction when they have no strong relationship with the mom. This is what typically happens. No strong relationship with the dad. This is what happens. Um, and you know, so there's, there's, I just, I love, I'm a numbers guy. And so I just look at past history. So data and it's like, oh my gosh, like it should be a huge priority for both parents to be heavily involved with their kiddos life. Uh, it, it has to be <laughs> like, yeah. no matter, no matter your career, your beliefs or whatever, if you want to, you know, have a, 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 a human, you want to bring a human into this world and have them be uh, contributing to society and this world in a way that you see fit and you see contributing, whatever that definition is for you. Uh, you have to, you have to be there. Otherwise someone else is going to raise your kids, the school system, uh, their friends, their friends, parents, or your your co-parent, right? Someone else is going to raise your kids if you're not there for them. So that's, that's, that one hits for me. <laughs> you are so evolved. I love it. And now we got to talk about dating because I know you, you're <laughs> single dad dating and you know, my community. So I started this whole mom's moving on thing back in 2020. And so a lot of my community that jumped on board when they were first getting separated, they're now out there in the dating world. And they'll say to me, like, if I thought dating was hard before divorce, like, <laughs> oh my God, try doing it with kids. It's, it's ridiculous. And I I've been there. Um, but I want to hear from your perspective, like what are some of the challenges of being a single dad in the dating world? Challenges of single dad in the dating world. So I have a few different experiences, uh, when I was first, so it took about 18 months out for me post separation. So, cause we got took about six months for the divorce to finalize but so 18 so about a year after divorce um did i feel mentally in a space where i would i would want to date i was still casually dating before that but i made it very clear and upfront that like hey i'm mentally and emotionally like not in a space to like commit and do these things i'm still juggling with like the new schedule and um i had like changed positions within the the police force and just a lot was happening on my plate to where um but pe uh, that where, where i would say I just be very transparent with what I'm looking for or not looking for because people would introduce me. Oh, you should see such and such. You should date so-and-so. And, you know, and then, you know, I, I play with the the dating apps a little bit just out of complete curiosity. And then, okay, this is kind of interesting. Oh, this is crazy. And whatever you start meeting people. <laughs> so it took about 18 months uh, before I was like, okay, I'm ready. Right. For the first time. <laughs> and then you, and then I went and tried to date, and then like, not a bad experience, just like a typical, they're not right for you, break up. And I'm like, all right, back to my cave, you know, like no right. one else, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and so my experience early on was, again, I was on shift work. So I was working four days a week, three days off uh, each week. And those three days off, I had Ellie. So I really didn't have time to date except for on my days of work, because I'm not I didn't have anyone ever watch Ellie to go date. I did not, that just wasn't a priority for me. I didn't want to do that. Um, so I had my days of work, which when I was swing shift, that's like brunch and lunch, right. <laughs> breakfast and breakfast. So it's like, or 1 a.m. It's quite a different- Guess it's what you're after, right? Yeah. yeah, a different dynamic of like, what are you looking for? So that was my early on experience. And then, so that was June of 17. I didn't go to day shift until like 2019. So then I was on day shift, which opens up everything a little bit, um, get off at like 4 PM. Um, then that's when it opened up more. Okay. I can actually, I have time during the day with everybody else in the world, uh, that works regular jobs. Um, so then let's see, your question was, what was dating like as a single dad? Uh, it was harder dating other single parents. Yeah, I know that because of their yeah. schedules and my schedules, like we have our kiddos on the opposite days mm -hmm. and it's like, this is never going to work. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's like figuring out an, um, uh, a math equation with no answer. Like it's, it was so hard for me in the beginning when I met my now husband, it was like, okay, like sometimes it was only like, see you Wednesday at lunch because I wasn't leaving my daughter to see him. He wasn't leaving hers to see me. And it right. was, it was just, it was, it was so hard. That's exactly it. So it's very, um, and so when that happens, it's very not forced. It can feel like an appointment. It can feel 
just like that, like an appointment where it's like, okay, we're here. We're supposed to be connecting. It's like, what would like you when do you're today? trying to have a baby? Trying to have yeah. a baby. I'm ovulating. We got to do I, it right I, now. Right now. Well, yes. I was, as I was saying this, I was thinking about like marriage and like scheduling sex or whatever it is, yeah. right? Or ovulation, you know, for for pregnancy. Uh, it's it's very similar, <laughs> a similar feeling of like, this is our time. Let's. What are we doing? Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> ah, it's horrible. Um, so that that goes both ways, not just single dads, but. As a single dad, single dads have it a little easier, I think, in the dating world. If you're involved with your kiddo, any what, any, 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 anyway. <laughs> so it's Why? like because women like eat that up. Women, so the standard that's been placed, or it's just based off of, I think, what's happened in the past with, like, in general in society, right? So like, men will leave children's fatherless homes. That's like a typical story you've heard or a statistic that you see in any articles or news or wherever where it's like there's more single moms taking care of kiddos and there are single dads taking care of kiddos full-time that is um so it's usually dads leaving the house leaving the family um one for one reason or the other they didn't want the kid it was a one night stand uh straight up abandoning the abandoning the family uh whatever the case is that's usually the storyline. So when you see the opposite of that story, <laughs> when you see the opposite of that story, it's it's like pleasant to see, pleasant to hear. It's like when I talk about dating on on TikTok and Instagram, you typically see uh, women talking about these topics. And so when I talk about it, um, a guy who's maybe comes, you know, it just opposites always interesting to see. So yeah, single dads, I think, have it easier because there's more single dads that aren't doing it than are. So I have some questions for you. And, and these are questions I get in my DMS all the time, dating questions for single parents. So a lot of moms will ask me, you know, I'm, I'm in my late thirties. I'm in my forties. I have kids. Like I'm not just dating to just, you know, date and waste some time. Like I'm dating with intention. I want to meet a good person. How much should I share on the first date? Like, should I share you know, that I want kids, that I have kids, that here's my schedule, what's yours? So we could see if we're compatible. Like what, what do you think is like the appropriate amount of information for a woman to share in the beginning? Yeah, great question. Um, what's an appropriate amount of information? Well, there's a few ways to, it depends on your personality and the energy you like to bring off. Some people are very, um, just kind of out there and okay with it. And it's part of their humor. And so like, I could see, it depends what mood I'm in, honestly, with what I bring out. So I can see myself and anybody else, single moms included, just rapid firing off like automatic nose, right? Like, do yeah. you smoke? Do you do this? Do you blah, yeah. blah, blah? And this like, almost talking about the elephant in the room of like automatic nose and, and yeses. Uh, that can be a whole thing. So you can bring up a lot of, big ticket items. Do you want kids? What are your thoughts on this? Boom, boom, but boom, is boom, that boom. like a turnoff? To, to, Cause I remember I went into my first date with my husband. I'm like, look, this is it. Take it or leave it. Like I have a two-year-old at home. If, if we are not aligned, like I'm out. And, and I know that my personality can be a little intense. So I'm wondering if that's like a turnoff to a single dad who also has limited time and like minimal bullshit on his meter to, you know, yeah. do it. I think if you're hundred percent you in your date, you're going to find someone who, who is going to want that. Right. And if someone doesn't like that, then that's not, not the person, not the energy that you, you want in your life. Right. You shouldn't have to change for somebody else to get what you want. Cause is that really what you want? <laughs> like, you know, having to flex or a, a bend to somebody yeah. else at all times, starting off with date number one, huh, rough start to right? <laughs> a long-term thing. So you know, say it how you want. If it's a red flag or if it's not, you know, red flag, if it's a, a showstopper, right. You want kids and they're like, I'm done having kids and you really want kids and they really don't want kids. Well, that's a big problem. That's going to have to be addressed. You might as well get it out of the way. Now you can start the date off with just like, I don't like super small talk. It's just, it's pointless. It doesn't mean you have to jump right into like philosophical, deep personal stuff. Cause that's also, like a force. I feel like you're right. forcing this kind of thing. Um, 
to start talking about whatever's happening in the, in the world or whatever in your, in your life that is. And, uh, but it should, you know, I think some big things should get brought up early, early meaning first, second, third date. Um, okay. Because, because otherwise it, it's like, I give those kind of that range of the first three dates or so, um, because any longer and it will be wasting time. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think of like good experiences. Most like dating apps are so weird. I see it. They work. So my mind, my mind goes to like dating apps are, it's like you're finding someone to go interview, which is horrible. I yeah. have had way more success when I'm just doing my life and I'm doing things that I want to do. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm ambitious in my things. So I'm always constantly in new spaces, going places and I'm in my lane. And if someone's lane kind of overlaps my lane, it's way easier in those scenarios for me, at least in my experience, to have conversations. Our goals are typically aligned or in parallel. Our our morals, our values, our ethics, our you know how we're going to get to where we're going typically are a lot more aligned versus you know pulling a, a you know whatever a bag out of it whatever think out of a hat a freaking yeah. chip out of a hat trying to figure yeah. out oh is this the right one is this the right one well if i'm running right. this way chips that are also going this way are going to likely be doing things that i like to so i think that's a really honest answer and i appreciate that so here's another one um mm -hmm. sex after divorce mm -hmm. that is tough for women for a number of reasons um maybe trust was broken bodies have changed after children yep intimacy was out the window for so long. So it's all like, you're like, I don't know, fumbling around in the dark and it feels weird. It's very scary for a lot of women. Is it the same for men? Is it very scary for men? I think He's like, time. no, bring it on. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think back. Uh, like the first time after divorce. Yeah, it was weird. It was because it's someone new and... I've been with the same person for what was it, like eight years or nine years. Um, and intimacy, uh, intimacy was lost during the last stretch of the marriage. Um, and I know for women, it's typically you, there has to be some kind of emotional connection more yeah. so than men. Men can be very just straight physical uh, and that's it. Um, and that was, that was what I would say. That's pretty accurate for myself too. A post-divorce, like just straight physical, um, what am I missing in this world? Like, have I missed out on stuff to like, are my twenties gone now? And, and then you, now and there's then you, new weird things happening that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then like, so from my experience, like after having been single for a bit and then doing like the whole single life thing after divorce, that is, um, and you get experiences. I learned very quickly that like, okay, like sex is great. Awesome. What else do you got <laughs> right? Like, are you, a, are you a one trick pony? Uh, is this it? Like that doesn't get me going anymore. Right. right. Uh, and so for, I, I know, I feel like a lot of men, well, it just depends because it's such a wide, I can't see, you can't speak for all groups of people. Cause there's just anyways. So like a good chunk of men, I feel think that they're missing out or they have not experienced certain things and I think it's like the grass is so green over there. And then when you go and experience it, uh, you're like, oh, that's great. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, oh, well, fuck. <laughs> like, and what what do I really want? Right? Pun yeah, intended. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So then so then you're then you're left with figuring out exactly what it is you do want, right? So I'm it's I think that experience has to be had in order to fully believe it it's like kids telling them don't do that learn from my mistakes they're like okay dad and then they go do it and mistake and they're like oh i totally get it now um it's just humans i think but uh yeah i don't know if that answered your question because i totally forgot the question now but no that's, I, and it, that's we, that. we, we covered a lot of ground there and i appreciate that because it's it's helpful to know i mean i i know that for so many people when you're at the end of a bad marriage and that intimacy is gone, like you think about it, you want it. You're like, what's that going to be like? And then you're presented with the opportunity and it's like freeze response. Like, I don't even, I forgot who that person is <laughs> inside of me for a lot of, well, that sounded, I forgot who that person is 
that part of me is, and and I don't know how to get that back. And so I'm, it's refreshing to hear what it's like for you guys too. And yeah, I mean, we need the emotion. You love the physical, but somewhere everybody evolves and like finds the benefit in both. Okay. One last question for you. And this is a big topic in my community. And I have my own beliefs around the topic and I've written about them in my book. And a lot of people don't like them, but Mm -hmm. there we go. What do you think about introducing the kids to a new dating partner? How soon should that happen? Mm -hmm. Have you done it? How has it gone for you? I have not introduced Elliot to anybody as, Hey, this is who daddy's seeing. This is my girlfriend. She's going to be around more often. I have not done that yet. So I don't have experience with that specifically. Um, has Ellie been around people that I, I hang out with from work that are friends who I actually did date and yeah, but you know, they were introduced in group situations and it's not like we were giving off girlfriend boyfriend vibes kind of thing um for the sheer fact that, like that is for me a very because ellie is gonna be in my wedding in the future i don't know if this person here in front of me is right so it's like she's right. with me forever uh is the it was like it's like the mindset right um when should people introduce kiddos if you have to ask yourself if it's too soon then it probably is great uh, answer you know and there was someone at my uh, that I know that said uh, I asked them when they introduced their kiddos. They're um, I think they're about forty five years old or so, and because uh, one party had three kids, the other one had t- two kids that were like adult uh, and like out of the house. I believe like they were like twenty. And the uh, one party said, "I'm like being very careful <laughs> in case they're like listening to this. <laughs> Just trying to be polite." Be. <laughs> I know. I almost even said something else but um they said once they knew that she was the one uh they introduced and it took 18 months to that point okay that's fair so zero introduction and then hey this person's gonna be in our life right and as the 18 month mark see i'm i'm on i'm on the other side of that thought process where like because my child is so important to me and my relationship with her is so sacred i didn't want to get to the point where i wanted to marry somebody without knowing if there is, you know, chemistry between this person and my child, are they going to be present for my child? Are they going to like, that's what I, that's, that's where I lean <clears throat> because I, I'm right there with you. Because if, if my life is these 10 things over here, I do things with my daughter. I do business. I do fitness. I do social. I do family. I do these things over here. Uh, and it's like a lot of that is heavily Ellie, my daughter, and so if someone's going to be in my life with these 10 things, one of which is like 70% of the things I do evolve, you know, revolve around Ellie, I better know if this person's compatible with that. So I'm right there with you. Exactly. Um, yeah. I don't know what's too early. And I think it's context on how you introduce as well. Again, it's right. like, that- there's no like one size fits all model, but I think whenever you choose to do it, if you do it with tact and you're, and you're, um, a little conservative with it and you're mindful. Yeah. Then I think then there's, you could do it whenever it feels right. Yeah. There has to be connection between those two people too, right? Your kiddo or for sure multiple and then the person. So yeah, I remember (laughs) I was convinced like, cause it was magic with my husband when we met and he was also (laughs) really great with Bella, but his daughter was already 10. Mine was two in diapers. And I'm like, Oh my God, there's no way. This guy, like it's, she's going to, we're one tantrum away from a breakup. Literally that, that was in my mind (laughs) about six months into our relationship. We had a hurricane here in Miami and me and my two-year-old were in his apartment and she had a, you know, a pouch, an applesauce pouch and was like literally like raving with it. And it was going everywhere. And I'm like, this is it. This is where it ends. And when it didn't, I'm like, okay all right, this, this guy can hang. All right. I think there's something here, but I needed to see that for myself because I was so on like the defense of, will you right. take us or are you just into me? Yeah, it is definitely an us thing. That's a great, great way to put it. Uh, I have had there, like there's friends I have, and I'm sure you guys have a similar scenario whether it's family or friends where it's like, they have kiddos like earlier in this, in the podcast earlier, I was saying how Ellie, I'm so grateful that Ellie is so easy as a kid when she was young and as, and now, and I could say she's easy because of other kiddos that I see, 
Um, and just th those experiences that my friends have with their kids. Uh, and some kids are just difficult. Why they're that way is a whole nother <laughs> conversation, right? <laughs> Lots to unfold there that are, you know, controversial opinions, but nonetheless, in the moment, these kids are difficult, right? They're not listening. They're unaware of their surroundings. They're causing like a scene, just like over the top. Ah, oh, like, what are you just take a second, right? Yeah. Uh, it's draining um, to be around that 24 seven. And so the concern you had with Bella and your now husband is, uh, is a good is a is a normal concern because you don't know For what sure. level of what level of patience your potential spouse has um their ability to handle stress or manage their emotions you don't know where it's at yeah. and they're gonna they're gonna get tested if you have a kid that is uh test worthy of emotions yeah. <laughs> so You're trapped inside for three days with a two-year-old that'll tell you everything you need to know about a person but absolutely you push somebody you'll know who they are so yeah you know? for sure mike this has been a really really great conversation and it went like in all different directions that i'm really excited <laughs> it went to i think i think you're really interesting and evolved and i think ellie's really lucky to have you and so is any lady who comes into your <laughs> lives um, any, any final thoughts you want to share with our community? Yeah. I mean, if it's a bunch of single moms, it sounds like, or divorced people divorcing, is like the main yeah. divorcing divorce. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you're in the middle of divorce, uh, it takes people around you, but it also just takes time. So like, even if you think you're doing all the things that are great and that you, I should feel this way. I should feel that if you're saying the word should, you're likely comparing yourself to some other one, some other person's scenario and comparing is a recipe for more negative than positive. So, um, True. just know that, yeah, it just takes time. Just take time daily, one day at a time. It will get better. I promise that. Yes, it will. Thank you, Mike. Where can everybody find you if they don't already know you, which I'm sure they do. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, uh, it's Mike R Draper. So Mike, the letter R Draper and same for TikTok, Mike R Draper. I have a website where I teach people about TikTok and short form video uh, creation. I saw which that. is, That's really cool. I'm going to link yeah. all of this because it's pretty, yeah, which is, know. yeah, which is Mike R Draper .com. Um, Yeah, that's, cool. are, that's where you can find me. Well, thank you. You go enjoy doing all the dad things you love doing. We'll be here for you guys. <laughs> if you have any questions, make sure to check Mike out and we'll see you next time on Moms Moving On. Thanks for being here. Thank you.